Hello friends, I wish you all a very happy and prosperous new year. This is a new year, a new beginning and things will change. Once again, I wish you all a very happy and healthier new year. Hey friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Mastery. I know structural analysis is the tough subject in structural engineering since it has many technical concepts like applied mathematics, material science, applied mechanics and so on. Though it is tough, if we understand the concepts clearly, it will become quite interesting. I am super excited to make it quite interesting for you all. Just join with me. In this video, I am going to discuss all about the very basic fundamentals of trusses. So without delay, let's begin. First, let's see what is a truss. Truss is a structural unit made from straight bars that form triangles or other stable rigid shapes. The simplest form of a truss is a one single triangle. So in truss, this is a joint. This we call it as a joint. In a simple triangle, we have three joints and this is a member. This we call it as member. So we have in this truss, simple triangle truss, we have three joints and three members one two three members triangle shape is the base shape of a truss which will not deform when the load is applied for example when the load is applied on this triangle truss so since it has the rigidity all the three joints all over the three joints the angle of the truss will not change so the, the truss will not deform under the application of load so this is a stable truss Similarly, if we take a rectangle truss like this, when the load is applied on the truss, the angle will change. The angle of the joint, each joint will be having some angles, right? So that angle will change and it tend to deform. This rectangle is an unstable truss. To make it as a stable truss, what we have to do? We have to add one incline member like this and we, we have to make the rectangle as two triangle okay now when the load is applied on this truss this will not deform so this one is stable this one is unstable this is stable so this is the basic concept of what is a truss i hope you understood clearly next let's see why do we need to do truss analysis the main purpose of truss analysis is to calculate the axial force in each of the members. When the load is applied on the truss, what happens? Internal forces will develop in each of the truss member. So we need to find out that internal forces in order to check whether the member cross section are sufficient to carry the load without any failure. So that it gives the information Truss analysis gives the information to select the proper cross section of each of the member. For example, consider this truss which has 5 joints. When the load is applied on this truss, we need to find out the support reaction as well as the member forces in order to check that whether the cross section of the truss members are sufficient to carry the load without any failure. So this is why we need to do the truss analysis. Let's recall once again. We need to do truss analysis to find out the forces in each of its member that used to check whether the member cross section whatever we have provided is sufficient to carry the load without any failure. This is the major reason why do we do truss analysis. Few important factors of truss. Trusses are used to resist external deformation due to external loads. Truss members are connected to each other using frictionless pin. You can see these two members are connected with the pin. Okay. When two members are joined together, one has the freedom to rotate relative to the other. So if these two members are connected to each other, this member has the freedom to rotate relative to this member. So, in this regard, truss joints cannot resist any bending moment. So neither the joints nor the members of a truss are designed to carry any bending moment. See, here the truss is loaded at the member. So, this is wrong. Actually, the truss cannot be loaded at the member. It has to be loaded only at joints. Since the joints are connected to each other using pins. Truss has to loaded only at joints. We cannot load the truss on the member. If we do that, what happens here, The this member tend to behave like a beam. So this will become a frame. It is. It will not become a truss. So in uh, truss, we cannot have bending moment. 
also trusses primarily transmit axial force only so there will not be any shear force or bending moment in trusses as we have the shear force in bending moment in frames and beams we do not have shear force or bending moment in trusses Truss, trusses always transmit only axial force the loads at truss joints can be vertical horizontal or inclined all members in the truss can carry only axial compression or axial tension as i told you before all joints are pinned so the member cannot have any bending moment so all members in the trusses can have only axial compression or axial tension here let me give a quick recap of what is tension and what is compression when the member is subjected to two equal and opposite pulling force it tends to extend then the stresses induced in that member is called tensile stress and the corresponding force is called tensile force similarly when the member is subjected to two equal and opposite pushing force it tend to shorten so the stresses induced in that member is called compressive stress and the corresponding force is called compressive force so this is very very basic i hope you all might have known about this but still i wanted to remind you here because in stresses while doing the problems we have to keep this in mind always like what is tension and what is compression next let's see the support conditions for stresses stresses can have only hinged and roller support hinged or pinned or roller support this one we call it as a hinged or pinned support this one we call it as a roller support if you want to know more details about support conditions and how we get the support reactions and all i have already uploaded one video so i'll give you the link in the description box if you want you can check that that will be very useful for you usually the truss joints are rigid by welding in the field however the analysis were carried out as though they were pin this is justified as the bending moment induced due to joint in trusses are negligible so the bending moment in the truss joint are negligible so trusses can have both hinged support or one hinged support or roller support trusses can have this kind of supports this is the correct one and this is also the correct one but this kind of truss we cannot provide since it has both side roller support we cannot provide this kind of truss so this is the wrong one joint could move either horizontally or vertically or combination of that since it has the hinged support and roller support it could move horizontally or vertically or combination of that so this is not allowed and also i wanted to tell you one more important point here you may ask that all the truss members will be having the self fight due to its self fight the bending moment may develop in truss truss members right consider this member the self fight of the member will act at the cg of the member so what happens when the self weight is acting at the cg of the member since the joints are rigid it cannot have any bending moment and it can be neglected so this is one important point to remember truss members cannot have bending moment and shear force as the frames are having frames or beams will be having bending moment and shear force but trusses will have only axial force that is axial compression or axial tension now let's discuss statically determinate truss so we have seen that what is a truss and why we have to analyze the truss and what is the support condition what are all the important factors what forces the trusses will have everything we have discussed now let's coming to the point that how do we find out the truss is a statically determinate truss or it is a statically indeterminate truss or it is a unstable truss so let me explain you so there is a formula that is number of unknown forces is equal to number of equilibrium equations so here this is the major formula to find out whether the truss is a statically determinate or statically indeterminate number of unknown forces are equal to number of members plus number of reactions so these are these two are the unknown forces because we know the, we don't know the support reactions and then we don't know the member forces so this we need to calculate right so number of unknown forces are equal to number of reactions plus number of members 
then comes to the number of equilibrium equations so number of equilibrium equations is two times joints if you want to know more details about equilibrium equation i have already uploaded one video i'll give you the link in the description box you can check that if you want so here two times joint if it satisfy this condition we can say the stress is statically determinate your m is number of members r is number of reaction and j is number of joints so here we have five joints in this stress we have five joints but you can ask me that why we need to multiply that number of joints with 2 so let me explain that as well so in 2d truss this is a 2d truss in 2d truss that is a plane truss plane truss means we'll be having only x and y coordinates okay so for this x and y coordinate will be having two equilibrium equations summation of fx is equal to 0 summation of fy is equal to 0 for a 2d truss we have two equilibrium equations that is why number of joint is multiplied with 2 m plus r is greater than 2j so if this is a condition then the truss will become statically indeterminate next m plus r is less than 2j if this is the condition then it will become a unstable truss i hope this is clear so let's uh, see with this truss m plus r is equal to 2j whether this is satisfying this condition or not so we have the number of members as 7 and number of reaction is 3 for fill the support two reaction and roller support one reaction totally we have three unknown reactions so 7 plus 3 which is equal to 2 multiplied by number of joints we have 5 1 2 3 4 and 5 so five joints so 10 is equal to 10 so this is satisfying the condition so this truss is a statically determinate truss now we find out that whether the truss is a statically determinate or indeterminate next step is to find out the forces how do we analyze the truss how do we find out the internal forces member forces so in the next video let's discuss how do we find out the member forces and support reactions so friends i hope you all like this video please do comment in the comment box and don't forget to subscribe this channel for more videos your comments are always welcome thank you for watching